Oh, so much adjusting. Hey, get it? Adjusting? Because I'm an adjuster. I guess you probably don't know this, but I use a teleprompter <clears throat> because I get off into the weeds real super easily and lose focus. And just, it's terrible. So I have to use this little teleprompter guy, which has been pretty helpful. It's been pretty nice. It's been very nice, actually. So I'm pretty excited about a lot of things coming, coming down the pike for Adjuster TV. Um, can't really give you much details right now, but as you can see, I picked up some new lights. I've got some other gear um, for doing more like kind of on scene or like live uh, stuff or event coverage, which is gonna be really fun. Uh, but anyway, um, Got some gear reviews. I've got a, I'm gonna do a review of this guy here. Check out my review on this thing in the next few weeks. I'm gonna do a little kind of walkthrough with it and unbox it and all that kind of stuff. For more information about getting licensed as an independent adjuster, go to adjustertv.com slash adjuster pro. In this video, we're gonna explore the differences between adjuster licensing exam prep versus pre-licensing. How to pick your first license and how to get several different state licenses by taking only one adjuster license exam. Starting now. This is Adjuster TV. Hey, it's Matt here with Adjuster TV. For the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. Click on the bell notification so you never miss a video. And thanks to Bob who sent me an email wanting to know when is a slope a slope? What if I have a roof with multiple facets facing the same direction? Do I have to do a hail test square for every single facet, even if it's facing the same direction as another facet? Firstly, thanks for being such a loyal viewer, Bob. So the answer is most insurance companies require one hail test square per directional slope. So no matter how many facets there are facing in a direction, say north, you go to the most exposed part of that slope and you do your test square. If you find enough hits in that test square, it totals everything that faces that same direction. Most roofs in the US have either two or four main directional slopes, unless you're in Texas, and then all bets are off. So generally speaking, you'll be doing four test squares at the most for the vast majority of your claims. Okay, so let's get this question answered. What's the difference between exam prep and pre-licensing? First, a little background. In order to work as a claims adjuster in the US, in many states, you're required to get and maintain a license for every state you want to work in. However, not every state requires people working claims in their state to have a license. But don't think that if you only wanna work in one of those states, that you shouldn't get your adjuster license. Having a license will benefit you in a couple of key ways. Firstly, you'll get some pretty deep policy knowledge by studying for and taking the licensing exam as well as the continuing education courses you'll need to take in order to keep your license current. Secondly, most IA firms will only hire licensed adjusters, even if you're content to work only in one state. And who wants to do that? Firms recognize the valuable foundational knowledge that you gain from getting at least one adjuster license. Okay, but which license to get first? If you live in a state that licenses adjusters, you must get that license in that state your home state. You can't decide that you don't wanna get your home state license and that you only wanna work in Texas and get that Texas license instead. It just doesn't work that way. Again, if your state licenses adjusters, that's the license you absolutely must get first. That's your home state license. Okay, well, what if you live in a state that doesn't have a licensing requirement like Colorado, Kansas, Missouri, North and South Dakota, Nebraska, Wisconsin, Illinois, Iowa? Uh, then if you wanna get an adjuster license, you can basically pick any other state license you want and that will be what's called your designated home state license or your DHS. Any other one you want? Yeah, I think so. However, it's not quite as simple as that. If you wanna have the most options for getting other licenses, you'll wanna get a DHS that's reciprocal by the most other states and is relatively easy to get. So the cool thing is this, if you get a Texas license or an Indiana license or a Florida license, those licenses are reciprocal with most of the other states where you want to work. I'll go through all those states in depth in another video. And Texas and Indiana and Florida are reciprocal with each other. Okay, you keep saying reciprocal, Matt. What does that even mean anyway? Okay, before we go into reciprocity, have you checked out the latest Adjuster TV webinar, How to Survive Your First Storm Deployment? Learn just how important your first CAD deployment is and how you can make sure you absolutely crush it by registering for free at adjustertv.com slash thrive. Okay, 
Reciprocity. Does that mean if you have Indiana as your DHS and you wanna work in Texas that you can just go work in Texas and Texas will recognize and honor your Indiana adjuster license? Kind of like having a Missouri driver's license and driving to New York and back and not having a problem? I sure wish it worked that way. But no, the way reciprocity works is that the Texas Department of Insurance will recognize and honor Indiana's exam and possibly their background check. You still have to apply for a Texas license and pay their fee and all that jazz. But since you took and passed the Indiana exam and you have your Indiana license, you don't have to take the Texas exam too. Make sense? Okay, so you have to take an exam as part of the application process for getting your adjuster license. With any state that has a licensing requirement, you can just show up and take their test directly from them as part of the application process. But if you're smart, and then you are, you'll prepare yourself for this test by studying your rear end off. I've taken a lot of insurance testing in my career and none of it has ever been easy. Insurance is archaic, confusing, has a ton of obscure jargon that only attorneys and legislators are comfortable with, which is probably because those are the chumps who come up with most of the lingo in these policies in the first place. So never under any circumstances should you ever try to take any adjuster licensing exam without preparation. Are there companies who can help you with exam prep? Yep, pay what they charge because it's absolutely worth it. There are no guarantees that you'll pass, of course, but if you study hard, you'll do fine. There are two ways you can do this. Number one, you can take exam prep. You might be able to get a book with a bunch of exam questions in it that you can study, or you can take an in-person or online course that will walk you through all the concepts and give you a practice exam with similar questions from the real test that you can take as many times as you like until you can comfortably pass before taking the full real state licensing exam. There's exam prep available for every state that has a licensing requirement. The other way you can do it is with what's called pre-licensing. So what's different about pre-licensing? Well, you'll take the same study course either online or in person, but instead of having to take your exam from the state, you can take the actual real exam through the company that you bought the pre-licensing course from. And the state that allows this will honor that exam and your test results. The big drawback to this is that there are only a handful of states that allow pre-licensing. There are, I think, around seven at the time of this video. I could be wrong about that number. The good news is, is that we don't really care about that. Why? Well, for most of your licenses, you only need to take one exam. Wait, what? So you remember that time when I just talked about reciprocity? You know, well, one state will recognize the exam from another state. Here's how this works if your state doesn't have a licensing requirement. Even though you can pick just about any other state to get your DHS in, you're gonna choose Indiana as your DHS. Why? I thought everybody got their Texas license first. Well, that's the way it used to be until a few years ago when Indiana began licensing adjusters. Three things make Indiana the preferable DHS license to get. Number one, they have the fastest turnaround time in processing your application once you've passed the test. Some report having their Indiana license in hand within a week or two from when they sent in their application packet. Two, they're reciprocal with every single state that Texas is, which is just about all of them, and that's all that really matters to you as a CAT adjuster. And three, Indiana is one of the few states that allows pre-licensing. Now to be fair, Texas and Florida are also reciprocal with most states and allow pre-licensing as well. But even now I'm hearing about several weeks up to a few months or more for a wait time for a Texas license. I don't know about Florida, it could be fast. Bottom line is, is that you should be getting one of these licenses as your DHS if your state does not license adjusters. If you, if you need a license quickly, go with Indiana. If you don't care if it's, I mean, if it's October and everything's winding down, then it doesn't really matter. Okay. Now that you've got your Indiana license, what now? All you have to do is go to sircon.com, create a profile, and from there you can apply to as many state licenses as you want that are reciprocal with your new home state or DHS license. It's really that simple. So no, before you ask, you don't have to pay for pre-licensing or exam prep for every single license that you get. You only need to get the one to start. Or if you live in a state like California or New York that is not reciprocal with anybody, You'll have to get that license, then get your Indiana license, then jump on Sircon and apply for the rest of your licenses. Make sense? Learn more about pre-licensing and exam prep by heading over to adjustertv.com slash adjusterpro. Adjuster TV is proud to partner with Adjuster Pro, who brings you exclusive pre-licensing for several states that you can get nowhere else. And don't forget, you can't really forge ahead into your new career as an independent adjuster without your adjuster license. So again, head to adjustertv.com slash adjusterpro.
Question of the day. If you've gotten an adjuster license already, how long did it take? If you got a state license other than Indiana that took less than a month to get after you applied, please let us know in the comments. Whichever license is the fastest one to get is the one you probably should get first. For much more information about crushing it as an independent adjuster, head on over to adjustertv.com. If you got value from this video, you can help me create more videos just like this by subscribing to Adjuster TV on YouTube. Wondering what to watch next? There are tons more videos right here on the Adjuster TV YouTube channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm.